All right, well, now that we've taken a look at the ESL 206, now it's time to go ahead and take a look at the this one here. So this is one that I've actually been really looking forward to taking a video of. And this is one that I've been looking for for quite some time now, actually. Um, this is, of course, the uh, Teledyne Water Pick model D2 Sonic Siren smoke detector. Um, this was made in... I think it was made in about 1977. Um, that's when most of the um, paperwork from the ones that we found that are new in box is dated. Um, at least that's what um, Jesse's is dated as. Um, which, if that is the case, then this is probably one of the very first alarms to use um, an electronic horn rather than an electromechanical squealer horn. Um, at least of the battery powered uh, types. So, um, as you guys probably know, this is the predecessor, well, not the predecessor, but, or sorry, successor, a successor to the D1, also made by Teledyne, Waterpik. Um, now, Teledyne, I believe, was the company. Waterpik was, like, the brand name, or, like, sub-brand, I want to say, because they were, um, known mainly for, um, like, water flossers, like, for, um, dental products um but for some reason in the mid late 70s they decided to venture into the smoke detector uh market um not entirely sure why it's like not anything like they usually produce so but you know i'm all for it, it just gives us some cool new cool other units to collect so um yeah the d1 was the original teledyne water pick smoke alarm and as you can see the design is pretty different. Um, there's some similarities, but the D1 is a lot bigger than the D2. Not a lot bigger, but it's a, it's a fair bit larger. The D1 is probably about like nine inches in diameter. It's one of the largest uh, residential smoke alarm models ever produced, I, I do believe. Um, this is notoriously a very large and frightening looking unit uh, for a lot of collectors. Um, but as you can see, the D2 is a lot smaller. It's probably more in line with like your normal uh, smoke alarm, like 70s first alert or 80s unit. Um, yeah, similar in size to like the uh, a first alert or something from the same same time period. Um, they probably just decided to shrink the alarm down to make it not as noticeable on the ceiling. Um, the D2 or D1 has these very large side vents here. And they did retain that on the D2. Did I say D1? D1, yeah. I keep going to get them mixed up this whole video, I know. But yeah, they did retain those large side vents there. They just shrunk them down a little bit. They are larger than, you know, a lot of other models of smoke alarms had. But um, a lot smaller than that of the D1. Um, which I imagine that's because dust was easily accessible through these large louvers and probably triggered some false alarms. So with these smaller louvers angled up more towards the ceiling when it's mounted or a wall, probably aimed to prevent as much dust from getting in through the sensor and causing false alarms. Now, um, the other thing, you can see this one has the label on the front here that says smoke alarm by water pick. It's kind of hard to read. A Teledyne product, and then it has the logo in the middle there with the sort of uh, speaker volume, like sound waves, I guess. The label on the D2 is kind of similar. It says smoke alarm by water pick. It doesn't say a Teledyne product, interestingly enough. It has that same sound wave logo, but you can see it says push test. So this one has a test button in the middle. This one does not have a test button at all, so you have to use smoke te to test this one. Um, I actually did used to think that this part was a test button when I used to see all the, like, the old videos of it, like Game Alarm's old vid. I um, thought that was a test button, but it's not. And the other thing is the LED, which you probably saw just flash. It flashes every eight seconds or so, just like this one. It just flashed when I pulled the camera away, so maybe I can... Get it to flash again. Yep, see? So, just like this one, flashes about every eight or so seconds. But it's in the middle, 
inside the under the test button instead of like this one which has it separate down below the center label there um, there's also these like vents around the top label which is kind of different and interesting um, and then something that I also noticed is that this one's design like the actual like form factor is actually more similar not to the D1 but more so to this Amway the old Amway models as you can see they have the same sort of smaller side vents there smaller than that one and they're also angled back towards the surface that it's mounted on so that's also ironic because um, this one as well as both of these models are actually rebranded smoke guard models by Statitrol. So these two are rebranded Smoke Guard 800s. This one actually is a direct rebrand of the Smoke Guard 800A. This one is more so an indirect rebrand, and I'll get into that in a minute, but this one's a rebrand of the Smoke Guard 809, which is the successor to the 800, as you probably all know. I mentioned in that one's video. But um, this one, as you probably remember from this one's video, is a direct copy or rebrand of the, of the 800. It has the same duocentric chamber in there with that top metal plate, the delta alarm horn, which the earlier 800 A's had. This one, of course, has the uh, Kobishi, I can show you, Kobishi CLB 27. This one, if you look in the side here, it has the same duocentric chamber sensor which you can't really see Let's see that you can sort of see it right there that big metal can for some reason the light is not lighting there we go okay there's a good view you can see there's the dual duocentric chamber right there and you can see the test button mechanism and everything right next to it but the horn in this one is very different. That is not an electromechanical horn. That is an electronic horn. And I believe we kind of have not I don't think we've confirmed, but it is almost certain that that's the same kind of horn that is used in the Sen System Sensor Mass series or MASS. Um and that'll further be proven when I give it a test. Um but yeah, like I said, this is the one of probably one of the first models to use an electronic horn rather than the mechanical horn because it came out in 1977 and like um the GEs came out I think in 79 or 78, the GE 8201-401C which previously I think we thought was the original the very first uh, alarm to use an electromechan or electronic horn. And then, of course, the Gateway Scientific ones that came out in, like, 1980, 1981, that did the continuous piezo. Those were also very early on in the uh, electronic horn era. So now, I guess, for further proof, I will go ahead and give it a test now. And this one has a really, really unique sound. Um, you just gotta kind of hear it to, to believe it. So, here we go in three, two, one... So that is the trademark sonic siren sound. It's like a, kind of like a whoop tone. Um, I'm actually not too familiar with the System Sensor MASS series, so I don't know if they have a similar tone. But that definitely does sound a lot like a commercial, like, fire alarm horn tone. So I, I do think that this is the same or similar type horn that was used in the MASS series. So, um, yeah, but, um, it kind it varies in pitch and that's, uh, for people that are sound sleepers, at least that's what it was advertised for. It was advertised to be more alerting for, um, the elderly children, people that are, um, really sound sleepers, deep sleepers. Um, yeah, I don't know why this wasn't like an implemented as like a standard for smoke alarms because this is 
very, very effective. This would, this would have woken me right up. I'll give it another test. It's like pretty loud. I have to say, I think that the, um, the sheer annoyance of it would wake me up more so than the volume. It's like not, I don't know, like, uh, the ESL is still much louder because it's just got so much more bass to it from that vibratory horn. But still, for an, a piezo horn, this thing is pretty loud. Pretty, definitely very effective. Um, yeah, the, the, um, the, uh, fluctuating frequency is really nice and of course as you all know they they did kind of mimic this sound in the first alert atom uh that they produced uh back in like the early 2010s i still have one uh, installed in my hallway and those did like a code three whoop which it wasn't as uh like so subtle like the 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 pitch up was a little bit more subtle than this one, so, but it, but it's still there. It definitely still has that uh, that whoop tone, uh, just like this one. So, yeah, but this was the original that did the the siren at least. Um, so yeah, and then strangely enough, the LED doesn't flash or anything with the pulse of the alarm. stays dark, which is, I thought that it flashed. I thought that was, that Nathaniel showed that in his old video, but I watched Jesse's video and I rewatched Nathaniel's old video and I guess they're not supposed to. The LED just doesn't flash or anything along with the pattern of the alarm, which is kind of interesting considering how the original D1, the LED goes uh, steady glowing when the alarm is sounding. Um, so now I'm going to see if I can't show you, well, actually, I didn't even show you guys the back of it first. So let me take off the mounting bracket. Here's the bracket, similar to the D1. Actually, it's literally just like a shrunken down version of the D1s. Um, the Amways is like a rectangular. But um, the... Probably the other main difference between the two is this one, the original one, takes six AA batteries, just like the uh, the Smoke Guard 800A, just a direct rebrand of it. But the D2 takes a 9-volt battery, so they found a way to make that more economical. It's definitely a lot easier just to replace one battery than it is to replace six. Um, so here's the informations. It's all molded into the plastic of the base, unlike being on a separate paper label like that one. So smoke alarm by water pick model D2. It's issue number 3957 and this one is issue number 2581 so obviously this one would be older. It's 0.9 microcuries. That's probably the same as this one. Yep, 0.9 microcuries. The um, duocentric chamber always had 0.9 microcuries, as you can see on the smoke guard. Now, um, in addition to the D1 and the D2 Sonic Siren, there was also a model that I'm not sure if it was made concurrently with this one and this one, or if it was made between them, but they had another model. That was just the D2, not Sonic Siren, just D2. And it looked exactly like the D1. But instead of being powered with six AA batteries, it was powered with a singular 9-volt battery. And it was... Um, Nathaniel apparently used to have one in his original collection. He just mentioned. And I, I he might have mentioned that before and I'd forgotten it, but I, 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 don't, I didn't remember that. But um, either way, apparently... It looked exactly like the D1. I don't know if it had a test button or not. He didn't mention, but I'm going to assume it didn't because it was just basically the same thing. It had a squealer horn, had the same duocentric chamber and circuitry and everything, but it was just powered by a 9-volt instead of 6 AA's, and it was model D2 instead of D1. So that was the D1, or D2, and this is the D2 Sonic Siren. So I think that this one probably came after... 
that one. Maybe that one was made concurrently with this one in like the later years. I don't, I don't really know. Those are much more rare than these two models, even though this one is a fair bit more rare anyways. Um, so yeah. Now, uh, obviously I got this one used, so I didn't get the manual or anything box or anything with it, sadly, but that's okay. Still super cool to have the unit itself, um, more than anything. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think that is probably about it for this video. So I'll give you one more test. Alright, so that is the Teledyne Waterpick D2 Sonic Siren smoke detector. So thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video.